Hi, my name is Aliftina Dvaritska Kerer, and I'm happy to present you today fast, secure, and accurate evaluation of prescription drug reimbursement claims using Hyperledger Fabric. This work has been done by a value based partnership consortium that consists of two insurance companies CSS, Sanitas, Universitat Spital Zurich, Hospital Universitaire de Genève, uh, two university hospitals, and Amgen Switzerland uh, uh, pharmaceutical companies in collaboration with Swisscom AG as a technology provider. So for the reimbursement of uh, different medications, uh, there exists a sort of pre-approval process that is based on different clinical criteria. So this traditional pre-approval process is paper-based, uh, lacks interoperability and trust, and often time-consuming, costly, and error-prone. So the aforementioned consortium um, created a blockchain-based system uh, for the fast uh, pre for to facilitate using a hyperledger fabric. Uh, digitalization of the process and uh, as well as uh, its realization using uh, smart contracts on blockchain allows for optimization of this process. And we have tested our system with real-time patient data and also compared it with the traditional paper-based uh, process. Uh, on this slide, uh, I would just uh, like to compare the traditional uh, process that currently exists and to get and uh, with uh, our blockchain-based uh, process that we developed. So traditional, um, just uh, maybe to check, is everything good? Okay. Um, so the traditional cost demand process uh, consists of the following steps. So first, uh, patient comes to the medical practitioner, and uh, then medical practitioner has to submit a paper-based form that is sent by post to the health insurance, where uh, health insurance involves a trusted physician that uh, has to evaluate the form and decide whether a patient is eligible uh, for reimbursement of uh, prescribed medication. The problem that all this process takes uh, about two to eight weeks because it can also involve um, back and forth exchanges between the medical practitioner and health insurance and also uh, involve a trusted physician that can take time to evaluate the, the request. Uh, also, this is the error prone because uh, we are talking about the paper-based form and also uh, sharing of the patient data and also sending the data over the post, which can also can impose some privacy threats. So in our blockchain-based uh, process, uh, we uh, propose to uh, evaluate uh, those forms automatically and also in a digital manner. So basically, uh, the patient would come the same to the medical practitioner, and then instead of uh, filling the paper-based form, the practitioner will use web interface in order to uh, insert patient data, and then the smart contract will evaluate whether the person is uh, the patient is eligible for this treatment for the reimbursement of the treatment. So this lowers the cost because now we don't need to involve trusted physician. Uh, it also allows to collect the data, to collect the outcomes of such process, and also no additional visits is required for the prescription uh, by the patient because then uh, the patient can receive uh, from the medical practitioner answer immediately whether he is eligible for this treatment and or not. So, uh, as I already mentioned, this work has been done uh, um, in collaboration with a pharmaceutical company, with two different insurances in Switzerland and two uh, different uh, university hospitals in Switzerland, in Zurich and in Geneva, and in collaboration with the uh, Swisscom uh, that provided the technical solution. So, we started from those um, forms that exist in this uh, usual paper-based uh, paper -based process. where So these are the forms that the medical doctor would need to fill in and uh, then send by post to the insurance company for the information. So what we did uh, is uh, from those forms, and uh, here you see a part of, of the form, and also the description, uh, which was, by the way, happening in different languages because we have uh, uh, some of 
some uh, part is in the one part in the French part of Switzerland. There are French language and also in the German. Uh, there is German used, so we had to basically uh, develop the interface uh, for two languages and then uh, uh, took to those um, rules in order to then um, implement them in the form of a smart contract. So basically, we had the form, we had the uh, information on how uh, to interpret the form filled in by the doctor, and so we created the rules that then uh, become became a part of a smart contract. So from those indications in the questionnaire, the doctor would uh, fill on the paper. We created those rules, and uh, those rules became the logic that uh, was deployed on uh, all the peers of our blockchain network, where we had two organizations, one for hospitals. Uh, we had two hospitals uh, testing the system, and also two insurance companies. And uh, we had um, also created the uh, front end for uh, and web interface for each of the type of the user, either hospital or insurance company. So this uh, web interface looks like this, and I will demonstrate it to you in uh, the demo. So I uh, prepared the video in case of a demo effect, but I will just try to. Uh, to demonstrate to you in real life how a system works. So let me just uh, another window. So now we see um, the web interface. And uh, I also uh, would like to, to show the the logs of our system. So uh, now we actually uh, connected um, to our blockchain network and we can see uh, that there are peers from the hospital organization and the peers from the insurance organization. So now we're going to enter uh, the, the logs of uh, one of the peers as you see here. And uh, Basically, we can see that uh, uh, this peer joined uh, one uh, channel and we will see that we have the, the height of the chain is like this. So now we go back to our web interface um, where we see how the system works for the doctor and for the insurance company. So for now, and uh, log in as um, one of the doctors. So I will log in as a doctor from our uh, University Hospital of Geneva. So here we can see uh, different uh, requests that has already been created by this doctor. We can see different patients, a uh, time of the creation of the request and two different companies that uh, has received those requests. We see that uh, some requests were approved, and then also there is a reason. Uh, right now you see them in French. Uh, and also uh, some uh, requests have been rejected, and again, there is an explanation why, why this happened. So now, uh, like I'm a doctor, I would uh, create another request uh, that corresponds uh, for this medication. And I first need to provide the information uh, uh, for the patient, information about the patient, uh, which is going to be Jane Doe with the insurance number, with the date of birth, and some address information. Now I can choose uh, to which insurance. I would like to send this request and the information is already pre-filled automatically about this insurance company. Uh, then I have to um, put information about the patient medical history where uh, I'm selecting the, the, those uh, information based on our imaginary example where, for example, patient uh, has diabetes that is controlled, uh, diet doesn't smoke, but his cholesterol level is uh, unfortunately quite high and without this medication. So we can also 
list here the information about some indications that patients received previously, because uh, here we are filling in the form for the, um, basically for the expensive medication, and therefore there has to be provided uh, uh, information about the previous treatment of the patient. And now uh, the most important part, we have to uh, select the indication. So basically uh, we, the doctor would like to prescribe this medication because the patient uh, has a specific disease and his cholesterol level is pretty high. So now we can either save the, uh, this uh, request or submit it directly. And we're going to uh, submit it. And now we see in the list uh, of the requests, we see that the information from this doctor about the specific patient is sent and the status is committed. So uh, then uh, almost immediately we see that this uh, request was approved and with the reason uh, why this request was approved. So now we can, um, we can log in as an insurance company, this one, and see what we received this request. So now I'm logging as an insurance provider. And basically, I can see this request that we just submitted, that it is approved. And as an insurance company, I can only see uh, without this data without modification. And now coming back, uh, while still have a couple of minutes, I would like to get back to uh, our logs of the peer. And then we see so the previous height of the block was 36. And now we're going to have the height of the block increased by two because the each uh, we basically have two blocks and um, each block has just one transaction that is uh, so each block is generated every two seconds and what first transaction is just the data sent by the doctor and then the second uh, transaction is actually execution of this logic of, of our smart contract so now just uh, i would like to end the presentation with this last slide uh, with, uh, with the results. And uh, so the biggest result is that we actually were able to test our framework with the real patient cases. Of course, after the consent uh, was provided by every patient for each case. So we test first our system with uh, about 20 cases from insurance companies. Uh, that was created by um, insurance providers uh, based on some realistic cases that they had before. And also with real patient uh, cases, we had six patients from two different hospitals, from two different insurance companies. And so basically, uh, the, the very important result is that instead of the average process that uh, takes about 11 days in these specific six patients, uh, we had uh, the results uh, that uh, we received in just a few seconds. And uh, basically also this approach allows to also identify and help to correct input errors and uh, gives a, a great potential for optimization of such uh, decision-making process. So thank you very much. Uh, I don't know if we have time for any questions. I'll be happy to, to answer. Oh, I see the, the question from Brian was the hardest part about making this all work. So, so actually it took us quite a bit of time. And um, I think that the most difficult part was uh, really not on the blockchain side. Well, first, um, I would say there are two most difficult parts. So one is um, creating this logic from the description and from the paper-based uh, form because but not even creating the logic but verifying it with every stakeholder because this is what we had to do uh we had to uh when when we created those um, business rules we had to really make sure that they are correct 
before even implementing that. And then we had multiple reviews with uh, people from insurance companies, from the doctors, and uh, really to make sure that we captured any single, every um, single possible case. Uh, for different uh, patients that that could that could come, and uh, another part was um, actually um, web interface, and also really making this uh, re really uh, trying to make make system more easily adoptable and uh, really um, implementing those forms uh, in in a such a way so that it's easy for physicians so that it captures the the missing data but doesn't try to mess with the logic doesn't propose uh, doesn't suggest to add something or to change something that would then influence the the give more data and influence the execution of the smart contract and yeah we will try to um, Yes, exactly. We will. We are trying. We're actually writing a paper right now, and we are also uh, talking with the. We are going to talk uh, with the Office of Public Health uh, in order to in Switzerland in order to uh, get their opinion and hopefully uh, bring this book to the to the next level and hopefully have it uh, really used by by doctors and insurance companies. Thanks a lot. Oh, I'm opening the Q&A. Oh, yes, that's a great question uh, about the mechanism for ensuring that no private data is shared with unauthorized parties. So uh, we actually, so the smart contract is running uh, on the on Swiss premises. However, it can also be running. All the peers could also be running on site on the uh, insurance companies or on the hospitals. Uh, what we have implemented uh, in order to ensure the the privacy of the patient is that all the patient data is. Um, encrypted uh, with the key shared between a doctor that is submitting the data and the insurance company. So all the patient, uh, all, all the uh, patient identifiable information, all, all this information about the, the patient like address and age and date of birth, it's uh, encrypted. And therefore, only the designated uh, insurance company can access, can can get the information from from the ledger about the, the the patients. So only about the patients from this insurance company. And also, as a as a service provider, Swisscom cannot see any information about um, patient data. So like this, we have really point-to-point uh, -point encryption between um, doctor and the insurance company have full access to the, to the patient data and uh, no other participant cannot uh, cannot see any information so another question uh, do you have a process for deleting editing information the doctors have input it incorrectly so uh, yes um, so if uh, this is spotted by the web uh, interface, so for example, if uh, some important information is missing, like indication, then um, I can actually share this real quick just to, to demonstrate. Like if I would be the doctor, and I would try to create the form. So I will start filling the information and then I would uh, try to submit the form that is um, completely not um, filled. So first of all, I can save, if I start filling the form, I can save some information, but if I try to submit the form, then uh, the I will receive a notification that will say, please fill all the necessary um, all the necessary fields, which uh, are 
uh, fields such as uh, information about private information about the patient, insurance company, and uh, uh, of course the indication. So basically, uh, already at the stage of filling the information, uh, we can spot if there are any information missing. Uh, also, if doctor made a mistake and maybe forgot to add some information about patient history, maybe about the previous medications, uh, then um, uh, and the request is rejected. Well, the doctor can see the reason of the reject and uh, see if there was uh, if maybe there was by mistake or if maybe something something happened. So another question about uh, uh, multiple blockchain have access to the data, it is encrypted. So we have just one blockchain, one channel, uh, where different um, organizations and different users can either write or query the data. So first of all, the mechanism is that the, the insurance company can see when, when there is a query to the, uh, to the blockchain, so only the data that is that is written for this insurance company can be accessed by this insurance company uh this is this is the mechanism in the in the query of the uh of the um, uh, chain code and uh, another part of the question authorized party share the key to decrypt the, the data so yeah we have basically uh we use diffie hellman uh, in order to have the uh, keys generated for each of the pairs. So we have two doctors. So it means that uh, each doctor, when sending uh, information, if it if information goes to uh, just one, so information can go to only one of the insurance companies, and then the, all the uh, personal identifiable data is then encrypted with this key. So it means that only designated insurance company can decrypt this information, while uh, the data uh, such as uh, facts like whether this patient uh, X would have, have or not have the, the diabetes or whether some facts from the history, they stay unencrypted. But uh, because the personal identifiable information is encrypted, then this is how we uh, make sure that uh, even the technology provider, even the nodes that even the uh, entity that is running the nodes cannot really get or even get, get cannot get any information about the patient. Thank you for your questions. So I'm just going back to the chat. Yes, I think I'm a little over time. So thanks a lot. Thank you very much.